Shalom, everyone, and good evening from Galilee, Israel. This is Amir Tsarfati, and uh, in a few seconds, we will invite our uh, other participants in our roundtable. Very, very important subject this evening, Mystery Babylon. But before we do that, a uh, couple words. First of all, Israel is going to elections in a couple of weeks, uh, the most crucial elections we had in, in, in decades uh, government of change that has changed everything for the worst may come to an end if the prayers of so many will be answered. Uh, but God is in control, and uh, you know we know that whatever happens, it's for um, a reason and for a season. Also, we'll be uh, in the coming weeks midterm elections in the U.S. that will also be very important. I know in several key states, the legislation that people are going to vote about are legislations that are related to very important things such as abortions and other things. Um, October is normally the month where the markets are, are very shaky. Um, we are about to see some major, major developments in world markets. We already see the um, ramification of the war in Ukraine on the energy sector. We can clearly see that the OPEC plus uh, decision to cut 2 million barrels uh, production a day um, is increasing the, the price of oil. The price of gas, of course, went up and Europe is trying to tighten its belt uh, in, 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 with the expectation for a very, very bad winter for them. The riots in Iran are entering in, it's into their fourth or fifth week already, and uh, it's getting worse and worse by the day for the Iranians. The retired Revolutionary Guards um, officers, those and their families, refuse to be drafted back and help, and so there is a big problem for the Iranians over there. And of course, of, above all, Israel is about to sign a shameful deal with Lebanon that will give the Lebanese uh, tens of square miles of Israeli territory in exchange for peace or quiet border. Um, we know that, uh, of course, this is not going to happen. So look, a lot of things are around the corner, but this is not what we're talking about this evening. Let me invite to this roundtable, uh, Jan Markel, Michael Lay, and Pastor Barry Stagner. And uh, shalom, everyone, and good evening. Shalom. From shalom. Shalom. Good to be here. Good to see you guys. Um, this evening, our topic is a topic that a lot of Christians are wondering what it's all about. We're, we're going to read shortly from Revelation 17 about mystery Babylon. But before we enter into this discussion, Pastor Barry, would you please start this uh, roundtable with a prayer? Father, we thank you that you are not the author of confusion, but of peace. And Lord, that uh, you have given us your word so that we can learn and understand from it. So Lord, we ask for clarity in what is spoken today. And we ask you to touch the ears of the hearer, uh, that our time might be beneficial and informative, God, and give us a better understanding of truth. We thank you that you you are the God who knows the end from the beginning, and you've told us all things we need to know. So help us in this, we pray. Bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, again, uh, I'm, I'm glad to finally have one more roundtable. It's been a long time yes. uh, for various reasons. Part of it is because we've been traveling other reasons is because of some, uh, you know, uh, other conditions. Look, I'm glad that we're together. A lot of people were asking uh, um, us, the team, when we traveled, when is the next roundtable? They missed it. Um, we also have been asked about when is the next Q&A. Um, and for, for the Q&A audience, um, Pastor Barry, do you want to say something uh, about the Q&A? Well, yeah, now that you mention it, uh, very excited. We have a, a book coming out. Amir and I uh, co-authored this book. And actually, it's rather interesting because it's taken from the, the questions on the previous uh, Q&A sessions. There's 70 questions that you all have asked uh, that we have compiled together. And Amir and I have both offered answers on these. 
And uh, we're really excited. You can pre-order this book now. And uh, I think, you know, I'm like everybody else, you know, I don't want to pre-order something. I want to get it when I buy it. But the truth is pre-ordering is very helpful for multiple reasons, two of which are one, it determines how many books Amazon is going to purchase. And also bookstores make their decision based on pre-orders as to whether to offer it online or actually put it on the shelf in a store. And uh, so we, you know, if you're going to purchase it, it'd be great if you would consider uh, purchasing purchasing it uh, in pre-order. Go to Amazon, look for my name, look for Amir's name, and you'll find the book there. And I think it's going to be uh, an encouragement and a great resource. Uh, there's actually chapters that are the prophecy questions are broken down into, starting with Israel, ending with the great white throne judgment and on into eternity and everything that happens in between the rebirth of the nation of Israel and the end of all things as we know them. So again, these are your questions. So I think mm. you'll find it uh, interesting and an opportunity to look and see if your question made it into the book. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, so folks this evening uh, from Galilee, your morning in America, we're going to talk about mystery Babylon before we, we, we read the portion. Allow me to say that Babylon is mentioned 280 times in the Bible. There's 280 references of Babylon in the Bible. That's a lot. I mean, Jerusalem has uh, almost 900 in yes. Jerusalem, the city of God. And so for Babylon to be mentioned that many times. Now, let me also tell you that um, for the most part, it's mentioned in the Old Testament. And apart from Genesis um, uh, where it's mentioning the Tower of Babel, and then later on, uh, I mean, the one who built it, and of course, when they built the tower. Um, we don't hear about Babylon, apart from one mentioning in Joshua chapter 7, Babylonish garment, he said, but, but everything is in the prophets, all. I'm, I'm talking about Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, and of course, Daniel. And for the most part, all the prophecies that were mentioned there, apart from Isaiah 13, we're not sure. Um, but apart from that, physical Babylon's destruction has been not only foretold, but fulfilled um, in those books. All the prophecies that Daniel, the famous uh, prophet of the times of the Gentiles, the famous one that is correlating with, with the book of Revelation. That's why in every seminary, the course that everyone takes is Dan Rev, Daniel and Revelation, because they, they go hand in hand. So the physical destruction of Babylon prophesied in Daniel has been fulfilled. And, and so this is why I thought it's important that I mention that, because tonight, at least my night here, we're not talking about necessarily physical Babylon in Iraq of today. Um, I'm going to ask Pastor Mike to read, and then I'm going to ask Jan and Barry and Mike, every one of you, please give us your understanding of what mystery Babylon is all about. Okay, so Mike, why don't we read Mystery Babylon, yeah. Revelation 17. Revelation 17 from the New King James Version. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having her hand in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. 
The beast you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is this and is of the seven and is going to perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them. For he is the Lord of Lord and King of Kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. Mm. And the woman whom you saw is the great city which reigns over all the kings of the earth. Yeah. And then, of course, chapter 18 continues to deal with Babylon, great Babylon, which is obviously a continuation of mystery Babylon of chapter 17. It's destruction and the lamentation of all the merchants for its destruction. Pastor Barry, so obviously... Even from a quick glance of the description of this mystery Babylon, we can tell it's not physical Babylon. Well, we're told that right away, Amir, when we see that this city sits on many waters, or the woman sits on many waters. The literal city of Babylon sits on the Euphrates River. It can hardly be described as a city that sits on many waters. And as you mentioned, chapter 18 also indicates that this particular city uh, and that would, which it represents, which is a global uh, materialistic empire, uh, is, is something that uh, the world is concerned about and falls under the leadership and covering of both materially and spiritually. And Amir, I think another important thing to point out is that as uh, Mike just read, you know, you've got a series of, of global kingdoms that are mentioned there. Uh, five of fallen one is, that's the Roman Empire. And uh, there's coming a, a seventh empire as well. Daniel chapter 2 says that the final world empire in the statue presented there is going to be a mix of a revived Roman empire and other nations. Now, how mystery Babylon it, is literal it, it, Babylon and sneaks in there, I don't know. Uh, but I would say that that is not uh, a proper way to look at, at this mystery. And, you know, the word mysterion, the Greek term used there, means something that requires investigation to understand. And so as we dig into this, we can see that what's talked about here is a global spiritual empire and a global uh, political empire uh, that is in view here under the reign of the beast of Revelation 13. Yes. You know, and, and it's important that we remember that not all the time when a city is mentioned, we're talking about the same city. Uh, sometimes there's the spirit of the old that is in the new. Uh, sometimes it's the sanctity of the old that is in the new. For example, the, the, the place where all of us are going to live in eternity could have been a place that God could name, uh, I don't know, give me a, a name from some, you know, some uh, uh, science fiction book. But the name that God gave to that place that is going to come down from heaven is a name that is familiar to us. It's it's Jerusalem. It's the new yes. Jerusalem. But it could have been it could have been a different name. But but my point is, it's not the same Jerusalem. This is the new Jerusalem, 
it is different, but it's the same name because this is the place where the people of God, this is the place where God will, will chose for the people of God. There is this characteristics that are the reason why the name moved. And here, I believe, it's the same thing. The, the defiance and the, 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 the spirit of Babylon of the old is, is, of course, on steroids in the new mystery Babylon. Jen, what is mystery Babylon for you in, in your well, understanding? <clears throat> Um, and I think I'm glad you clarified, Amir, that um, I think this is the second most named city in the Bible because that's important. Okay. Obviously, Babylon uh, plays a huge role um, in the last yeah. days. I think you said mentioned 280 times. Um, only Jerusalem precedes that. So something's going on here that we need to understand. And unfortunately, there's so many different interpretations and, and I just want to say right up front here that we've got people in different denominations and therefore their church is going to handle this topic differently. No wonder people are confused because, um, I mean, a church that teaches all millennialism will not be teaching it as we are today. An all millennial uh, church would be teaching that. Um, nothing is 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 uh, liter would would leave Israel's role out of everything. What if what if they went to a church teaching preterism? Then they'd be reading everything in the Book of Revelation, including what we're talking about today. All happened in the past. So again, this is why it's so confusing. But that doesn't mean it isn't important. And so to me, I see Babylon as the fountainhead of idolatry, as the mother of every pagan system that was spread around the world in other words ultimate evil um and i think i see it as the actually the symbol of confusion um mm. and, and we haven't even gotten into the occult angle which is probably for another time but um paganism and occultism and and false religion and quite frankly a mess Yes, I think that one of the things we have to remember is that the Tower of Babel, it was about man's trying to, you know, achieve uh, or reach out to where God is and replace him, basically. Man wants to do right. what man wants to do. Pastor Mike, how do you look at Mystery Babylon from your perspective? And I know that you you gave an interesting message called neo Neo-Paganism, the glue of yeah. the globalism, which was a very good one. But how do you see mystery Babylon playing today in our in our world today? Well, if you, if you read the text, there is a expectation that the reader at that time when John wrote it understood the concept of Babylon that spanned as Pastor Barry illustrated. And as you said, the Tower of Babel, which was the original confusion because of humans wanting to self-glorify, we saw that this kind of concept carried into the actual city of Babylon and actually became a method of them conquering other people. They would exile them, then they would be confused as to who their identity is, what their values are, what their religion is. And we also see a reference of this in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 13. Peter references, um, greet he, she who is in Babylon, referencing the church within the system or the concept there in Rome, understanding Daniel, which we talked about being confused and having the melding of the ancient and the new nations. We see that Babylon, by the time John writes it, the, uh, the reader should understand that this is a godless, man-centric system within the earth that spans all over the globe, centered within what would remain of the Roman Empire. And today, yes. Christianity has been replaced historically with a new form of religion, and that is neo-paganism, taking yes. and borrowing from ancient religions you see it in tattoos, you see it in music, you see it in pop culture, you see it in the entertainment industry. And this is global, Amir. That's how I take it. Yes. <clears throat> I think that we need to pay attention also to physical cities that are rising into their 
stardom in 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 the last few years and they have become the refuge place of everyone who wants to run away from old uh babylonian uh places such as america and europe uh mm -hmm. people are flocking now believe it or not to places like dubai and people are flocking from there to a new place that the Saudis are now building called Neom. Yeah, and yeah. I want I want everyone to pay attention to that place. Now, I'm not saying this is Babylon. I'm just saying this is the new concept that can tell you that the Babylonian spirit has been moving from a place to place and changing its mm -hmm. appearance, but not its essence. Mm -hmm. um, remember... Uh, Jan, in one of the conferences we I did, uh, well, I spoke at uh, your conference, conferences in Minnesota. I gave a message about how Europe is getting closer to the Antichrist. And I think that <clears throat> I mentioned that it's interesting how most of the most of the wars normally were were uh, uh, fought and eventually ended in Babylonian territory. But when it comes to Europe, Europe has imported Babylon into its own territory to the point that one of the gates, original gates into Babylon is in the, um, um, in the um, museum in Berlin um, and, um, yeah. and, and where you can not only see the gate, but you can also see the seat of Satan that was also taken yes. from another place in Turkey. But I do want everyone to know that there are new rising alternative places that are all about men's achievement, wealth, but still worshiping Mother Earth. They're about to build a building, a city, a city that is one building that stretches for over yeah. uh, nearly 70 miles in order to make everything else green and nice and untouched. It is frightening. When I saw the video of how Neom is going to become, I realized this is really something that is going to attract billions of, of people, uh, billions of, of dollars, and, and people will be, you know, worshipping the city even, not just the you know, rulers, but even the city itself will be worshipped. We need to pay attention to all of those things. Yeah. Um, so do you see in our world, Jan, do you see in our world today um, the spirit of, of, of this mystery Babylon already, even without oh. having necessary? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Yeah, well, I mean, I believe it's this all comes down to the um, Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, I would have to say in my lifetime, I have never seen the spirit of Antichrist um, so, so out of control. Um, Americans would know what that's about. Now, I mean, even 10 years ago, we did not see that like we, we do now. Uh, the complete and utter lawlessness that's going on really around the world. But Westerners tend to, I think Westerners, if we were to, to, to look at what's happening in America and the rise of complete anarchy in many places, and remember Mike and I are in Minneapolis, and that's kind of the mecca of lawlessness because it started in uh, May, June of 2020 with George Floyd and all, all of that. But but anyway, this is, since then has risen out of control. And and so this this, what we're talking about today Though it, this is an adulterous religious system, and um, I find it interesting that that addressing this woman who rides this beast, and I want to say a word about that a little bit later. You know, she's dressed in purple, which is a symbol of royalty, mm -hmm. and I think the question is, why on earth is she identified with royalty? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's worthy, worthy of a discussion too. I, I think that Dave Hunt wrote a whole book. Yes. On, on he did. Women rides the beast, and he identified the Catholic right. Church nowadays as yes. as the religion of of that. Which, by the way, fits perfectly to the message I gave about the rise of the new world religion, yes. uh, which is Christless religion, and it's all about everything else. Pastor Barry, uh, so so when you when you look at the description in Revelation seventeen and eighteen, what 
what is the, the difference between this description that's obviously speaking about the future and the Babylon that we know from the Old Testament? Well, I think, you know, going back to Babel, like you mentioned, you have the seed of idolatry, man's efforts to reach God uh, apart from uh, a savior or through his own efforts, <clears throat> kind of a works righteousness uh, type of uh, approach to uh, reconciling with God. And, you know, we've got this in all kinds of forms throughout the course of history, uh, various religions establishing uh, uh, a works related uh, effort to uh, get back into fellowship with God, so to speak, or even to a degree just to simply arrive in heaven and uh, spend eternity in paradise or whatever. And they're all, you know, related to uh, what happened back in Babylon mm -hmm. and under the leadership of Nimrod, the mighty hunter, uh, and looking at all the things that are associated with that Genesis account. We're seeing that today. And Mike uh, offered a very key word to our understanding, and that is man-centric. And uh, it's all about uh, the individual. And we live in the, the age of the selfie uh, where, uh, you know, like Paul said in Second Timothy chapter 3, uh, people are lovers of themselves. And that mm. is the object of their worship. And we see this manifested in this, uh, this city. And Amir, uh, you mentioned Neom. And I was thinking, you know, one of the things for people to understand is that Neom spans three different countries. And uh, so that's kind of a push in that, hey, can't we all get along direction that's going to happen? Uh, during the tribulation, let's just have one central form of leadership and the one central religious system uh, so we can end all this bickering and geographic posturing that we see happening today. But it's it's um, obviously spiritual at its source, and uh, it's feeding into this delusion that we see happening uh, in our world today where, you know, Antichrist, you know, isn't it, it means instead of Christ and it means against Christ. And uh, the instead of Christ part is man uh, becoming central to all that he does and becoming his own object of worship. And, uh, you know, um, uh, Vance Havner said that the church in the last days has become the old Adam Improvement Society. Mm. And what he means by that is just how can my life be better? How can yes. I get God to cooperate with me and make me more prosperous, make me more healthy, make me more wealthy? And this is playing into the ecumenism that's going to uh, dominate the last part of the church age and feed into the tribulation period where there is a global system of worship and a global object of worship. Mm -hmm. And basically it's just, it's materialism. Yes. It's all about me. What yeah. can I get and who yeah. can I get it from? You know, a lot of people might criticize the uh, four of us for, for not taking Babylon literally if you take the Bible literally, how come you don't take Babylon literally? Well, we don't take Babylon literally as the place in Iraq when it comes to Revelation, because Revelation is not saying that. Revelation talks about mystery Babylon and then describes a place in a system that are not necessarily related to all the Old Testament mentioning of Babylon that were all fulfilled. Think about it. If Daniel is the main prophet, that will correlate with everything that has to do with Revelation. And all of Daniel's prophecies regarding Revela regarding um, uh, old Babylon, Iraqi Babylon, have been completely fulfilled. Then we know that the mystery Babylon, all four of us agree, is not physical Iraq Babylon uh, that is in, in, not in existence anymore, by the way. I remember... When America took over Iraq in the first Gulf War and then came the second wave in the second Gulf War, everybody said, you must buy Iraqi dinars because Iraq is going to rise into power and this, this, this currency is going to worth billions. People convinced others to buy them by the, and they were worth like toilet paper at that time. And, and, I wonder, did it work for you? No, because everything, all that they told you was based on Babylon will reemerge from the same. They don't even have the power to elect their own government. <laughs> they, they just finally elected a speaker for their parliament and a prime minister after such a long time. It's the country is in a mess. Islam is tearing the country to pieces. The Shiites and the Sunnis and the Kurds and the Yazidis. I mean, there's... 
Trust me, yeah. the last place on planet Earth that is going to be adorned and worshipped by the world's mer merchants is today's physical Babylon that doesn't even exist anymore. I think this is the right time, Pastor Mike, to move yeah. to the portion of Q&A. Uh, yep. Could Thank I you. add something, please? Could I Go just ahead, add a please, comment? Please, please. Uh, because in late July, and, and some of your viewers will be very aware of this, in late July... Um, at the Commonwealth Games, uh, I believe in Great Britain, uh, Prince Charles attended, now King Charles, uh, as part of the ceremony. And the world of darkness loves to get involved in ceremonies and present their, the, <laughs> the dark side of what they represent. So at the Commonwealth Games, end of July, um, as a part of the ceremony, a beast was 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 motorized, uh, uh, looked like a giant bull, huge, just huge, and, and moved into the center of the uh, sort of the round area yeah. where the opening ceremony was, at yeah. which point a woman came along and sort of tamed this beast. Mm -hmm. And then the woman went up and uh, rose and uh, sat on top of the beast. Now, my question is, and we don't know. Is the dark side just flaunting all of this because they it's, want us to see yeah. the kind of strides they are making? The strides is a mm. concerns darkness, the occult, mm. paganism, etc. Because then the ceremony went on for 20 minutes, yeah. and then all of the people that were participating came and bowed down to <clears> the beast and to the woman riding yeah. the beast. To me, this jumped out of Revelation 17. Yeah. I, I, when I looked into that, I read about it, and what they said it's this is an old symbol of Birmingham, the city that is that hosted uh, that thing. But of course, what they did, they took something that maybe is related to the city, and they they um, they created out of that one an image that should tell you that something else bigger is going to happen and you should already get used to it. And I think that we've seen that type of ceremonies in the Gotthard uh, um, yes, tunnel. The in, tunnel. In, yes, we've seen that in, in the London Olympics. We've seen that in so many uh, of those ceremonies. They use that because they know the viewership is enormous. They know that exactly. there will be billions of people watching. So exactly. they, they send their esoteric... Uh, uh, symbols and and all their sub sub messages subconscious messages uh, through those and, and and people you know our mind is like a computer it remembers uh, things and then it gets used to things and but before you know it when the real thing comes you already accept and, it so and that's my but, point and i think many watch that so naively so yeah. innocently they did not know correct. there was conditioning going on correct okay yeah, hey, yeah, go ahead. You know, I think one more thing to mention uh, regarding the literal city of Babylon. Please. You know, as Mike read earlier, uh, here's the mind that has wisdom. Seven heads are seven mountains on which the, women's, the woman sits. There's also seven kings, verses 9 and 10 of Revelation 17. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time, and the beast that was and is not is himself. Also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. Now, this city of seven hills or seven mountains, it's interesting that uh, the two legs of the Roman Empire are both known as cities of seven hills, Istanbul, Turkey, and Rome, Italy. Oh. And also, if you consider what we're told there, there's seven kings, five have fallen. That talks about the Egyptian, the Assyrian, the Babylonian, the Medo-Persian, and the Greek empires. They have all fallen. And then John is told in 94, 95 A.D., when he got these visions of Revelation, that one is. What was the empire that was in charge of the world, the or the empire. major portion of it, during John's life? It Roman was the empire. Roman Empire. And the beast rises up out of the Roman Empire. Now, again, why would the revived Roman Empire be headquartered in Babylon, an Iraq. empire that has fallen? It just doesn't make sense. And uh, so the empire is going to be 
uh, you know, Western Europe, uh, you know, some believe the Antichrist will be Greek because of Antiochus Epiphanes. And we don't know that for sure. But we do know that he's going to be of the Roman Empire yes. and uh, the geographic Beautiful. region and all those things. So, again, you know, it's not something it's not a salvation issue, uh, but we do want to hold to what the scripture says. And, you know, we also have to remember that the book of Revelation opens with John being given a vision through signs and symbols. It was sent and signified. And that phrase in Revelation 1 means to show through signs and symbols. So there is symbolic language, representative language of, of uh, other things in the book of Revelation. And uh, the fact that this is identified as a mystery uh, tells us this is one of those things that requires investigation to understand, which literal Babylon does not require. Exactly. And I've yeah. been telling that forever. Mystery Babylon is called Mystery Babylon because it's not Babylon. It's Mystery Babylon. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's move to the Q&A, um, Pastor Mike. Okay, Q&A. Kathy uh, already had her question answered. Pastor Barry, you, uh, you already predicted what people are going to ask. Kathy asked specifically that question about the kings and the mountains around uh, Rome. And here are the ground rules. State your name first and then your question. First name is enough. We don't need to hear your first and last name so I can address you. And then let the question be pertaining to everything we've talked about thus far. The mystery of Babylon, globalism, yes. Europe, all that kind of stuff. So the first question up is, um, I'm going to throw this one at uh, you, Jan. Um, Heather is asking, there are many things about Revelation, Revelation 18's description that fit America ironic isn't it um can you help explain if and why you do believe the u.s is the mystery of babylon um and i'm going to add a caveat jan just to make it clear um because we did say this as a global thing but how, how how does america fit into this whole thing well I, i'm glad this came up right away uh because I, I get lots of emails from people saying don't you know jan america is babylon and then i get a list of why america is babylon well it's the land divided by a river uh, because again um, in the bible babylon's going to be obliterated and don't you know that's new york city because it's a tower it's a it's a city of yeah. Sorry. international commerce and then the whole world will grieve because uh, new york has been destroyed i i just gotta say i totally reject that and i think the others should weigh in on this because this is a very popular belief that yeah. america is babylon and and look all that's happening to america as we speak and going forward is her decline and and she she does not play a prominent role in the end times. I'm sorry, I, I hate to burst anybody's bubble, um, but Bab America is not Babylon. Has nothing to do with Babylon. And 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 Amir, I, I'd love for you to address this and further clarify because folks are really confused. Yeah, I I think that uh, when you have authors that write books that are Americanizing everything that is happening yeah. around the world, this is the end result. The end yes. result is that people think this is about America. I can tell you that America is not worse than Europe. And I can tell you that Europe is not worse than other places uh, that are uh, in, you know, other uh, parts of the world, such as even in Australia. I see the spirit of the Antichrist everywhere. I see that almost every continent nowadays is promoting, and apart from Africa, I must say, it's still not, Africa has its own pagan things. Yes. But, but, but when it comes to the spirit of the Antichrist, look, it's very easy to Americanize the gospel and to Americanize the book of Revelation. I would say, remember, America is already in Ezekiel 38, a non-issue. Right, right. Again, already before the rise of the Antichrist, America is a non-issue. It is not there to stand, help Israel, fight with Israel. It is not mentioned as anything of a power that is meaningful in the entire 
description of it's a if that's the, if that's what's going to happen with America before I don't think 17 and 18 are all about America I believe yeah. that America is fulf, has fulfilled its role I believe that America right now is going through a terrible time uh you know with its government so by the way we're, we're going through the same thing here right but same I, thing. I, uh, but I will tell you, it's very important that we stick to the description of the Bible, not only uh, in, in chapter 18, but chapter 18 comes after chapter 17. Do not disconnect the two. And if in chapter 17, we are given a description of the, uh, you know, seven hills of the kings, where they are, how many are left, who is before and who comes after you kind of detach that from things look like in chapter 18 as america yeah. you know uh, keep it together keep it in the right context yes america promotes a lot of evil nowadays but remember america also promotes the gospel more than any other country on planet earth so we have to remember that um there's a lot of great things and a lot of bad things in america but i do not believe that mystery Babylon is America. I don't believe that. And I see why people fall into that trap because when when, when, when several books came out in the last, uh, right after 9-11 and, and all of that, it gave the people the understanding that everything that is happening in America is related to Bible prophecy. And mm -hmm. uh, remember, Bible prophecy is not about nations and their, and their dealing with one another. It's about nations and they're dealing with Israel. And remember that. It's important. Yes. Uh, and so, so um, uh, it's, it has to be very clearly stated that I believe America will step down from world superpower even before the rise of the Antichrist. In fact, the rise of the Antichrist will prove that there is a need for something else because yes. that which is now is no longer sufficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, America is rushing yeah. rushing into irrelevance as we speak yes, uh, yes, because yes. of having no leader in in Washington. Yes. We are becoming an, an irrelevant. Mm -hmm. We we wouldn't have the conflict in uh, in Ukraine if we had a leader, uh, both in America and a global leader. But yeah. but when America doesn't lead, the world falls apart, and America's not leading, and, and we're because seeing the world falls chaos apart, everywhere. And because the world falls apart, the world would le look for a new leader, something yeah, else. Exactly. Something exactly. And yeah. so I don't, see, I don't see America as 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 mystery Babylon. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I know I may disappoint people, but this is not. Where yeah, just, but just remember, folks, that it's she's the abominable prostitute. It's the it's this whole mentality, Babylon esque system, man centric, neo pagan that infects the countries amongst those countries is the United States, is Australia, is New Zealand, oh, right. is yeah. Indonesia, is Russia, is you throw whatever country, Colombia, Argentina. So here's the next question for Pastor Barry. All right. This, this, is, uh, this is for Chris. This is from Chris. I'm often curious about the global economy playing into this. Global economy, is that a part of the mystery of Babylon, Pastor Barry? Well, absolutely. The um, the Antichrist to the, the first beast of Revelation 13 is going to control all global commerce uh, mm. through a mark taken on the hand and the forehead. Mm. And, uh, you know, this is part of the materialism of the last days and uh, on into the tribulation. And, you know, it's obvious, and I think people often get drawn into this, uh, idea about America, as Amir was just saying, uh, because it's obviously a commercial uh, or a um, right. not just commercial, but a consumer uh, mentality that is taking place during the tribulation when Babylon is destroyed. Who's going to buy our stuff? And of course, America is known as a great consumer of goods, of the world's goods. Uh, but that just means, as Amir pointed out and you pointed out, Mike, uh, we're just one among many you know, the world population is going to hit 8 billion in the middle of November. There's less than 320 million people. That's less than 4% of the global population. And yes, we are a superpower. Uh, there's no question about that. But that power is waning quickly 
Mm -hmm. as we see inflation on the rise and all the other things happening. So, you know, commercialism is definitely going to play a part. Uh, The control factor during the tribulation period to push people to the worship of the beast, as Revelation 13 says, if you can't buy or sell, if you're unable to provide for your family, if you're unable to eat yourself, the whole idea, since the enemy only comes to steal, kill and destroy, is to push people to the worship of the beast. Well, I can't go to the store if I don't have the mark. So I better take the mark in order to survive. So, you know, but first, before any of that is able to come to fruition, that has to be the mentality of the world before the tribulation ever starts. And uh, that's what we're seeing today. And that's why this whole idea of commercialism uh, definitely plays into the whole tribulation scenario. Mm -hmm. So Amir Uh, uh, says, yeah, go ahead, Jan. Well, pa- paganism, right, is so huge in what we're talking about, particularly Revelation 17. Um, this, this, this whole uh, pagan woman riding the beast and everything. But bringing it back to America for just a second, I, I think if there's one thing that has characterized America in the last uh, 20, 30 years, it's it, and sometime we need to talk about it, uh, not today, but it's the it's, staggering rise of paganism in the Western world and in America. And Mike, you brought that out at the Nashville uh, conference just beautifully. Um, But America now is symbolized by paganism, whether it's the occult, whether it's the new age. Uh, I could give you all sorts of examples that America is leading the way from, you know, fortune tellers, all of this. And this plays into this whole, um, pagan system that's blossoming here in revelation 17 so th- yeah. that's another connection not to say that america has anything to do with revelation 17 just the opposite but i think that's another connection that needs to be talked about yeah. at yeah. some point. Yeah. yeah look um amir uh, i'm going to throw this one at you it's actually the combination of two questions um david is asking this question and we also have uh, somebody that uh, nameless that just referenced the um, the Islam religion for the Antichrist. David specifically asking, um, is this future religion Islam? Is the Antichrist Muslim? Let's um, let's unconfuse okay. people with this whole thing. I mean, we've been clear. The text says the region and the mystery lets us trace it back to yeah. the whole. Yeah. So let's yeah. unconfuse people. What what role does Islam play in this whole thing? And it, 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 where is the Antichrist going to come from that, yeah. you know, uh, is forecast? This is exactly why I mentioned Neom earlier today, because when I was watching the video that is introducing Neom to the public, I did not see Islam there. Hmm. And I'm talking about Saudi Arabia, Mike. I saw one person that is dressed like a Muslim, but the rest is not. Mm-hmm. And this is the new headquarters of Muhammad bin Salman. This is this is the, his crown jewel. Islam as a relig- religion is going to be diluted, and it's going to be um, a, a, a religion that will be under this concept of be good, do good, stay good, all is good. Join hand with other monotheistic religions yeah. such as Judaism, yeah. Christianity. In Abu Dhabi, you can build an Abrahamic house, family house, and have right. a temple, a Jewish uh, synagogue, a Catholic church, and a and a Muslim mosque. And all of us are together. Listen, it's. I'm asking you if if a religion says there is no god but Allah, and now it's holding hands with uh, other religions. One that he says, Jesus says, I'm the only way in truth. And the other says uh, that the Lord God Jehovah is one. Okay. And everyone is holding on to this truth. But at some point, all three are now agreeing that all ways leads to God. Amazing. And therefore, they had to, they had to give up on the foundation of, of which their religion is based uh-huh. in order to in order to reach a broad a broad base for them to do something else and that something else mike is yeah. a new type of culture religion behavior commerce thinking it's scary now let me let me say something 
I, w I woke up in the middle of the night a couple days ago. People know I don't sleep well. But oftentimes it's because I think too much and I think about stuff and I woke up <clears throat> and the, the, the verses that came to my mind are from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I realized that what we see now, Mike, is nothing compares to the world during the tribulation. Oh, yeah. Because the world during the tribulation, it will be so brainwashed, Mike. It will be so that the thinking will be so different than what it is today. But remember, that salt of the earth is gone. Remember, mm -hmm. the light of the world is gone. Yes, there will be people accepting Christ, but the church is gone. The church mm -hmm. is not here to spread the light, to show the way, to, mm. to be the, restrain. the you know, this obviously to restrain as well. And I'm telling you, Mike, when I read the, 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 the words that it says that the, you know, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, Satan with all signs, all power signs and lying, lying wonders. wonders. And then he says, with all unrighteous deception. There will, it's not just deception. The deception is about unrighteousness being righteousness. Yeah, it's wow. unrighteous deception, <laughs> which means yeah. everything that is good will be held as terrible. Wow, we're everything. already moving that direction. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But think about it. If now you and I can detect it, you and I, we can see all four of us. And I, yeah. I believe there are thousands of people watching right now. We can see it. When we're gone, who is going to protest that? Who Good is point. going to say no to these things? There is They'll get only, everything they want. No, beyond that, mm -hmm. they will get everything they want and they will be addicted to it. They will be so addicted to it that anything he wants, he will get from them. Because this is not going to be a political leader that you can be angry with or you can boot out, or you Amazing. can vote out. This is going yeah. to be a leader that people will worship. Now, who in the world nowadays do you see that rules any country that the world is worshiping? Who? There is no such thing. The world has not seen it yet. Hmm. And even when a type of the Antichrist, Antiochus Epiphanes, remember, even when he wanted to be worshipped, the Jews said, I'm sorry, <laughs> we're not going to worship you. You know, there will be a point, Mike. And I'm telling people now, if you do not choose Christ today, you will be so brainwashed that when you will see the judgment of God coming and you will know that it's from God, you will still not accept him. And you will blaspheme him as the previous chapter, chapter 16 of Revelation, the bold judgments. What happened? The sun was scourging people. And the Bible says when they know that God can stop it, they still did not repent. And they blasphemed him. They blasphemed him. My point is, Mike, religion that we see today, Muslim, Jewish, it's irrelevant. It's not going to be a religious thing that we know of today. There is a new religion that is emerging. Right. Right. It has nothing to do with the prostitute uh, going into all of the religions exactly. and sleeping. And they, they compromise their values. Compromise their it. values. And it's going to be such a mindset that is so deprived and so brainwashed that the talk about Muslim, Jewish, this is irrelevant. All of us are now speaking the old language. That will yeah, soon probably. disappear. This is old language. Religion is old language. It will be spirituality. It will be spirituality without accountability. Look, I woke up in the middle of the night because I, I had cold chills because I realized this world is gonna is on a self-destruction mode. Amen. But they don't even know that. It's like it's like it's like they're sanctifying these changes. As, as good changes, as, as important changes. We're, 
We have billionaires, <laughs> yeah. we have big techs and billionaires that are hailing, that are, that are saying, hail to the change, hail to the, to the, to the advancement, to the, to the enlightenment. And here we are, the four of us, and we're being held as unrighteous because <laughs> yeah. we're, being held as, we're yeah. being held as the bad guys yeah. when all we want is to choose life and all we yeah. want people. Shame on us for wanting to save babies and keep somebody yes. from a narcissistic self-exploration lifestyle. So we, we, we need to stop thinking in the terms of Jewish, Muslim, this and that. It will be irrelevant. When we're gone, yeah. they, don't, they won't speak that language anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are only one minute until the top of the hour, but I'm just going to say let's go over just a little bit. Because this one for Barry, I want to throw this one at you. One hour, this whole thing is destroyed in Revelation. One hour. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, is it is it is it, well, is it in, in this particular case? Is you know, I know literally an hour. Is it it? I mean, um, it's a good question, actually. There, there's kings of the earth that rule with a short time. That's obviously a figure of speech. Uh, it, it means exactly what it says, but it's uh, an unknown time period. But I don't think that necessarily applies uh, to this situation. I believe one hour means it's destroyed immediately. And uh, yeah. within just that 60-minute that, uh, time period, I don't see any reason to move beyond that and look at that as figurative uh, because we do see that the, the, uh, the, the uh, merchants and all them are, are looking – at uh, this this commercial system and saying everything that has caused us to survive and thrive has been destroyed in one hour. And the Lord said he's going to take care of it in a day. So, you know, yeah. there's no reason to see beyond that. I, I you know, it could mean that uh, in a single day, but I, I think it means exactly what it says that the Lord, as you look, you know, back up a little bit and see the great hundred pound hailstones of fire pounding the earth in Revelation chapter <laughs> wow. 16, uh, yeah. God can take care of things rather quickly, and uh, I don't yeah. think he's going to need, uh, you know, a whole day uh, to to take care of Babylon. Yeah. Trust me, yeah. The, earthquake, the earthquake that is mentioned there is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Jan, um, uh, this is, this is uh, just a summary question here. Um, mystery of Babylon, what are some of the, like, identifiers of globalism slash Babylon. As we discern the times, what are some of the things that they believe that should cause us as believers to not want to compromise? Like Amir was talking about all the religions jumping into the bed. Sorry for the metaphor, but the Bible does say prostitute, jumping into the bed okay. and compromising everything. What are those things? Just, I mean, can you give us our people a sample of what is going on and what they, they quote unquote believe and what we should guard against. And we've actually done a couple of programs on that topic because it's so important. And as we see the rise of, again, we've talked about it, this world economic forum, this Klaus Schwab, Yuval Noah Harari, he deserves a program in himself, Mr. Harari. Um, and we see the rush to one worldism. We mm. see, um, um, uh, I've, ne I've never seen this, this rush to, you know, the, the, there's a bumper sticker out there that says it all. It's this coexist little bumper sticker. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that summarizes the one worldism that can't we all get along type thing that's going on absolutely on overdrive. I've, you've seen that little coexist. Um, all religions getting along, all nationalities getting along. Um, but, but, I, but I'm concerned at the progress. On the one hand, I'm concerned at the progress the globalists are making. On the other hand, that means the church is out of here, you know, I mean, any day, because this globalist effort is taking over yes. more and more and more and so rapidly. Mm -hmm. And so I think we should look at that almost in a hopeful way. The more these one-worlders gain control, gain influence, uh, that, 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 that the good news is the sooner we are out of here. Yes, I, yes. I am convinced it's any day. 
I yes. mean, yeah. literally any day. Yeah. Folks, get your spiritual life in order. If you are not, say, born again, please don't put that off because time is running Amen. out. It is Amen. running out. Yeah. Well, yeah. Speaking of time running out, Amir, we are yeah. out of time. Yes. And I'm going to hand it over to you. Yeah. Um, Maybe last time, Barry, do you want to say one last word about the upcoming book we we, we uh, did together? Yeah, I, All the again, I, I think because this topic uh, creates so many questions that uh, to have a resource like this that you can go through chapter so, by chapter and somebody will say, you know, modern Israel is not biblical Israel. Well, the first chapter tells us why that isn't true, why modern Israel is absolutely the prophesied uh, reborn, reborn nation of Ezekiel 37 and uh, other places as well. You can talk about why we believe in the rapture of the church and questions about that. So chapter by chapter, uh, you'll have a resource that you can look up yeah. that other uh, people have asked the questions about yes. and uh, and yeah. find an answer to it. And, uh, you know, the actually the publishers of the book said something that I found to be uh, very encouraging, and that is that Amir and I both answer the questions, but one answer complements the other. It's not redundancy. It's not, you know, we both said the same thing using different words, and uh, they were very pleased of the completeness of the answers that are given uh, between the two uh, offerings that Amir and I each yeah. offered. So I think it will be really helpful uh, for any, and again, the pre-order thing is super important, so please, uh, if you would, consider doing that. Yes. Well, let's show uh, everybody's uh, social media so you can follow them. Jan, uh, this is Jan Markell social media. Uh, follow Jan. There's Facebook, Instagram, Rumble, Telegram, Gab. And there is a website, of course, you can see. It's Olive Tree Ministries. And uh, Pastor Barry, this is Pastor Barry's uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Telegram. Um, and uh, Mike Golay, our director of um, operations is there and uh, you can follow also me on instagram telegram um and everything is behold israel and folks remember one thing um let me say if you're not following me on telegram listen stuff is happening and you're not even aware of it putin is now amassing nuclear bombers closer to europe and he's yes. doing the same thing. He's doing the same thing he did with his ground troops on the borders of Ukraine before he invaded. Nobody believed he would, and he did. And now he's doing now the same thing with his nuclear power. I'm not saying he is going to attack tomorrow. I'm just saying watch and see. I'm reporting that on Telegram. Let me show you what Telegram, how to get it in a few seconds. But before that, Jan, would you do us the honor of uh, and end up with a prayer? Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you have allowed us to be a part of this generation, the final generation, the uh, amazing the amazing events that we're watching, not just weekly, not daily, but literally hourly. And thank mm -hmm. you for giving, giving so many, at least that are following today, eyes to see, ears to hear. I pray that you would turn those, that kind of interest and enthusiasm that folks would, would run to those that they know who do not know you as Lord and Savior and talk to them about salvation while there is time. And we thank you that we are not going to see this terrible system, this terrible prostitute system that's coming along, this mystery Babylon. The church will never see it, but we're seeing it nonetheless form right before our eyes. So again, thank you for giving us wisdom and insight and for allowing us to see the future, but we only see the future through the Bible. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys Amen. for this thing. Let me show you how to join my Telegram. And we'll see you uh, soon in our next Q&A and roundtables and uh, PRS and as well as prayer meeting. Thank you. God bless you. And Shalom from Galilee. This is how you can get to my Telegram channel. Join the Amir Sarfari and Behold Israel channel on Telegram. Here you will receive daily updates and audio messages from Amir. You can also take part in our community and reply with comments. Getting started is easy. Simply download Telegram from the App Store, then visit the Behold Israel Telegram channel in your browser. From there, click Preview Channel, then click Join. That's it. See you on Telegram.